It's no secret that pilots at the major airlines earn fat salaries. At Delta, even new first officers earn $92 per hour. This number goes all the way up to $354 per hour for the most experienced captains. A very similar pay scale can be found at American and United as well, who also pay anywhere between $90 per hour and roughly $350 per hour. Now, it should be noted that pilots don't work 2,000 payable hours per year like most other jobs. The average pilot flies 75 hours per month or about 900 hours per year. This translates to about $81,000 for new first officers and $318,000 for the top captains, and that's just cash compensation. All of these companies have extremely generous retirement plans that are idiot-proof. Usually, most companies will match your retirement contributions up to a certain amount, but if you don't contribute, they won't contribute either. All three of these airlines, however, have a defined direct contribution of 16% into either a 401k plan or a B fund. This means that on top of your salary, they'll contribute 16% worth of your salary into one of these retirement funds. Additionally, they also offer 401k matching as well, usually up to 5-6%. to This means that even as a new first officer, you'll automatically be contributing about $13,000 per year into a 401k plan thanks to the defined contribution. If you maximize your own contribution to the limit of $20,500 and leverage the 401k match, you'd be contributing about $35,000 in just your first year. For perspective, if you contribute $35,000 into a 401k for 40 years at an 8% return, you're left with $9 million. And that's literally the lower bound. For the most experienced captains, they enjoy a defined contribution itself of roughly $50,000. At this point, they only need to contribute $11,000 from their own paycheck to meet the total contribution limit of $61,000. At this rate, you'd be looking at reaching $15 million by retirement. On top of all this, pilots at major airlines also enjoy generous profit sharing. Before the pandemic started, Delta shared a record $1.6 billion, which works out to roughly $17,500 per employee. When you add all of this up, you'll see that these pilots start off in the low 100s and are able to work up all the way to nearly $400,000 in total compensation. And the best part is that progression within the airline industry is extremely straightforward. You don't have to suck up to your boss or come up with a new product idea to get a promotion. Promotions within the aviation industry are generally automated and solely dependent on your total flight hours and experience. So if you stick with it for long enough, you will eventually reach the top. And if you thought the base salaries were a lot, don't even get me started on overtime. But this brings up the question, why in the world are pilots paid so much? One of the main reasons that pilots are paid so much is because the barrier to entry is simply so high. Not only do you need to spend years building up flight hours, but you also need a four-year degree to fly for any of the major airlines. The airlines have been getting more lenient with their degree requirement recently, but they still very much lean in favor of candidates who have one. Starting with the degree requirement, this doesn't need any explanation because I'm sure all of y'all are familiar with how this works. You go to an institution for four or maybe three years and reluctantly grind out annoying homeworks and tests and eventually you'll walk out with a piece of paper. But if you want to become a commercial pilot, you're only about halfway through. First, you'll have to get your private pilot's license, which costs between $10,000 and $20,000 and usually takes about 9 months. After this, you can start grinding out your commercial pilot's license, which usually consists of three parts. First, you have your instrument ratings, which cost between $10,000 and $15,000. Second, you have the commercial license itself, which costs between $25,000 and $35,000. And finally, you have multi-engine add-ons, which cost between five dollars and ten dollars at this point, you're two years in and have already invested fifty dollars to $90,000 into training, not to mention the cost of college. But at least you have your commercial license, right? Well, yes and no. With this license, you can start flying for commercial purposes, but that doesn't mean that you can actually fly commercial airlines. To do that, you have to get your ATPL or Airline Transport Pilot License. To get this, you don't need very much additional training, if any. But what you do need is an eye-watering 1,500 hours. As a new commercial pilot, you'll probably have somewhere between 250 and 300 hours. So you'll have to find out a way to grind out another 1,200 hours on your own. Fortunately, if you got your bachelor's degree in an aviation-related field, you can bring down this requirement from 1,500 hours to 1,000 hours. This is where good planning comes into play. 
but you'd still have to figure out how to get another 700 hours. You could opt for a unique solution like crop dusting or flying skydivers. But more times than not, the most efficient way to build up these hours are to become a flight instructor yourself. The bad part though is that this will cost you another twenty dollars to $35,000, and it'll take you at least another year if not two to actually build the hours themselves. On the bright side, you will get paid as a flight instructor, but it won't be that much considering how much time and money that you've already put in. After all of this, you finally get your hands on an airline transport pilot license. On average, the entire process costs about $100,000 and it takes 4 years. So most people are usually in their mid-20s by the time they get their college degree and ADPL. But now, you can finally become a commercial airline pilot. While you can get a job as an airline pilot, you still won't be making the big bucks. Given that the aviation industry is 100% driven by experience, you're gonna have to start off at the regional airlines that no one likes. The good thing though is that most of these regional airlines flow directly into the major airlines. This means that as spots open up at Delta and American Airlines, they'll automatically transfer the most experienced pilots from the regionals to them. Usually, this happens once you build somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 hours of flight time. Given that you only built 1,000 hours to get your ATPL, you'll have to build another 4 to 5,000 hours before you make it to the majors. To make things worse, this won't be particularly enjoyable either. All of the most desirable routes and schedules are reserved for the most experienced pilots at the major airlines. So as a rookie regional pilot, you'll be doing the routes that no one else wants to. This usually consists of multiple 1-2 to two hour flights on a daily basis. Not only will you be taking on the most undesirable routes, but you'll also be paid regional airline wages. Take Endeavor Airlines for example, which flows through to Delta. As a first year first officer, you'll only be making $52 per hour or about $47,000 per year. On the bright side, you'll probably be able to move up to being a captain within 2-3 to three years because the churn at these airlines are super high as everyone is moving to the majors. As a captain at Endeavor, you can earn a much more respectable $89 per hour or about $80,000 per year. Once you're a captain, you probably won't have to wait much longer until the major airlines call you in. But the entire process at the regionals usually takes 4-5 to five years in total. So by the time most people finally get to their majors, they're in their late 20s if not over 30. Once you put in a couple of years here though, you'll finally become a captain at a major airline and earn over $200,000 per year which will slowly rise to $400,000 per year. So becoming a pilot is definitely a lucrative career, but the upfront time and capital investments are insane. Not to mention the daily sacrifices that pilots have to make like always being on the road and constantly eating out. They're also taking a massive risk with their health as well. Pilots have to pass a first class medical examination every year and if they fail they can no longer be airline pilots. Fortunately, these guys won't have any trouble picking up a nice job as an air traffic controller or something. But given that most pilots become pilots out of passion, this is definitely not an optimal outcome. Airlines have been trying to simplify the process as much as possible. For example, they've been requesting that the government reduce the 1500 hour flight rule. But the FAA just rejected this notion a few days ago, so that's not exactly progressing well. Airlines have also been launching their own flight academies that are supposed to streamline and subsidize the process. But these are brand new, so we'll have to wait a few years before we see any results. In the meantime, becoming a commercial pilot remains a long and grueling process. And to get people to go through this process, airlines are having to offer late career salaries well into multi six figures. But given the massive pilot shortage, it appears that even these salaries are not enough to attract new talent. It's 2022 and we have the most advanced technology ever. Yet for some reason, we also have shortages all over the place. There is a car shortage, a chip shortage, an oil shortage, a minimum wage worker shortage, a software engineer shortage, and of course, a pilot shortage. Most of these shortages were a result of the pandemic though. The pilot shortage however has been ongoing since 1997. Right now, there is a shortage of 8,000 pilots which is about 11% of the workforce. To make things worse, this number is expected to grow to 30,000 by 2025 and 80,000 by 2032. This insane shortage is giving existing pilots an extraordinary overtime opportunity. You see, airlines try to avoid cancelling flights as much as possible because it makes them look really bad. People will share their negative experiences with friends and family and on social media, and it's just not a good look. 
So what airlines do to reduce this is to ask existing pilots to take on additional trips where they're paid 100-300% to more. When your base salary itself is already over $250 per hour, this quickly jumps to several hundred dollars per hour if not over a thousand dollars per hour. Also, pilots are usually extremely picky with which overtime trips they take because they can only fly a limited amount of hours per month. The FAA restricts pilots from flying more than 100 hours per month. So after their base 75 hours, they only have 25 hours left to work overtime on a monthly basis. Because of this, they usually don't take the opportunities that are only 100% above their base salary. More times than not, they strategically wait for the ones that are 200-300% above their base salary. If they max out their overtime to 25 hours at $1,000 per hour, that's an extra $25,000 per month or $300,000 per year. And this is exactly what many of the top pilots are doing. Using this strategy, the top pilots at Southwest are able to make $549,000 per year. The top pilots at Delta are able to make $526,000 per year. And the top pilots at American Airlines are able to cross $700,000 per year. And all of that is only with an 11% pilot shortage. Imagine how high these salaries will be in 10 years. In the end, the reason that pilots earn a lot isn't rocket science. Like any job, they're paid in accordance to their demand. Demand for aviation has been skyrocketing for decades, but the supply of pilots hasn't quite kept up. The main reason for this is all of the insane requirements to become a pilot. You literally need over a thousand hours worth of experience before you can even get your first airline job. This issue has only been accelerated by the tech industry which has been able to offer higher salaries with less education time. So the majority have chosen the tech industry over the aviation industry. And it's really only the passionate ones that end up as pilots. But man, if you're already on the other side, it's never been a better time to be a pilot. The median salary itself currently stands at $202,000. But the top pilots earn well above half a million dollars per year. And honestly, it's just a matter of time until this becomes seven figures. Now, personally, I do think all shortages will eventually be dealt with. But that doesn't mean that the process will be fast. This shortage can easily take another decade, if not more, to sort out. And by then, pilots will be one of the most appealing careers out there in terms of compensation. Would you become a pilot for a 7-figure salary? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you think you might have chosen the wrong career. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.